Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to my extremely professional stream of Bomb Jack. I have no idea whether this is working or not, but I'm going to assume it is, and I'm just going to go ahead with this. There it is, our beautiful title screen. And it is pretty. Look at those nice colors and the, the spinny thing. I love this game. Bomb Jack is uh, a game by Techon, which is also Tecmo. Um, you know what? I have the Wikipedia page open over here. Oh, don't look at that. That's just I was having problems before. Anyway, forget about that. Here's Bomb Jack. So yeah, released in 1984 by Techon, today known as Tecmo. And uh, here's our little friend. We'll see more of him in a second. What a cute little fella. So yeah, it's made by Tecmo, the same people who make, you know, um, what is it called? D Dead or Alive, Ninja Gaiden. I don't know if this game has high-res boob physics. Probably not. I don't think they really found themselves until the mid-90s, Tecmo and their, you know, their true calling was to make fighting games about girls with large breasts, but... Bomb Jack is just a normal dude wearing a mask and a cape who uh, collects bombs. He's just a normal guy like that. No boobs, nothing weird about him at all. Let's see, I I'm kind of curious if the... Uh, I hope there's nothing embarrassing in my history there. Um, the Japanese flyer looks any different from the American flyer. You know, this, this looks like it's probably the Japanese one. They're both a little bit, you know... I'm not sure which one I like better, actually, you know? They're both kind of charming in their own way. What is this? Oh, Mighty Bomb Jack. May I, we'll talk about that later. Oh, the MSX one is nice. You know what? Let's get into the game. Enough of this shit. Sorry, wrong button. So what is Bomb Jack? Why am I playing Bomb Jack? Well, Bomb Jack, I'm playing it because it's fucking a great game. And uh, I'm just playing it on MAME here. But yeah, this is an arcade game. And... Um, Let's see. It's an early platformer. So that's one of the things that's kind of interesting about it right off the bat. It's a platformer that was made before, um, you know, like Super Mario Brothers really like popularized and standardized the genre. You know, it was made after Donkey Kong, though, which is kind of really the first platformer in a lot of ways. Um, but in a way, this game maybe feels more like Mario Brothers, the arcade Mario Brothers, which also it came out after because... You know, it has this sort of, you know, Donkey Kong is all about getting to the end, right? It's less about, like, maximizing your score and clearing areas. Um, it's more about, like, getting from point A to point B and avoiding all the obstacles in the way. And I like that, but Bomb, Bomb Jack isn't like that. Bomb Jack is more of, in a lot of ways, it reminds me more of, a, like, a maze chase game like Pac-Man. You know, because you're trying to get a certain number of objects in a level while avoiding the enemies. And also, like Pac-Man, you can't attack the enemies directly. You have to get a specific power-up, which this P, that was that power-up, turn the enemies into coins, and then you kind of turn the tables on them and you can grab them. Um, so yeah, this game kind of feels like a hybrid between like a platformer and a maze chase game. But, you know, so this it kind of came out before platformer controls were standardized. That's one of the things I like about it. Like, uh, it, it controls kind of weirdly. So if you press the jump button once, like that, you just go high. You just keep going. You just press it once. You don't have to hold it down. You just keep going up. And then if you want to stop rising, you have to press the jump button again. Right? So, you know, I guess Super Mario Brothers kind of, or Super, yeah, kind of standardized that as you know, being a thing where if you want to stop your jump, if you want to stop rising, you press, you let go of the button. That, you know, that's kind of how every game has worked since then. This game's weird, though, in that sense. And also, if you hold up while you jump, then you just go forever. So you can just jump the entire length of the screen if you want. So it's very freeing. And the game, you know, it does have, like, a kind of non-standard control, control scheme, but once you get used to it, it gives you it makes you feel very nimble and powerful and that's important in this game because you spend a lot of time dodging these enemies and yeah so yeah the way the way the enemies work in this game is that you know it's kind of different from something like pac-man where there's always four enemies on the screen and they move in relatively predictable patterns and i guess that's one of the things people like about pac-man is how predictable the enemies are they all have their own kind of personality and movement patterns that's cool but in bomb jack 
the enemies are just it's like chaos the enemies is you can see this happening right now they just appear out of nowhere and then they transform between like different types so there every type of enemy could at any time transform into another type of enemy so it's really really hard for you to kind of like make any long-term predictions about what these enemies are doing so it kind of forces you into a uh to rely more on like instinct and like in the moment dodging and weaving rather than planning ahead and sort of exploiting the AI, which is kind of what high level Pac-Man play boils down to is exploiting the AI patterns to go get into infinite loops where you can never get caught. And then the other thing about the enemies in Bomb Jack is that they just appear. They just appear ad nauseum. Like, you know, I, as far as I can tell, I'm sure there's a limit on the number of enemies that can appear in the level at any given time, but I don't think I've reached it myself. It gets to a point where the enemies are just going to destroy you. There's going to be so many enemies that no matter how you get it, how good you are at the game, they're just going to get you. You're going to get got by a skeleton, and there's nothing you can do about it. So it becomes about sort of managing the number of enemies on the screen. And that's another really clever part of the design is it becomes like a push-pull. And this is a really good example of that right here. Or sorry, I should say risk-reward rather than push-pull. The more enemies there are on the screen, the more points I can get by grabbing the P, turning them into coins, and collecting them. I want to collect the shit out of these enemies, but I want to collect as many out as, at once as I can. So I was trying to farm enemies there. I was trying to let like a bunch of them get on the screen so that I could grab them all. But obviously that plan can backfire, and it did backfire there. And this game is always kind of getting you to... It's always kind of tempting you to make risky decisions, right? The other thing that plays into that is this firebomb mechanic. So you'll see, like, I'm trying to collect all these bombs, but at any given point on the screen, one of the bombs is lit. It's on fire. It's a firebomb. And you get way more points for grabbing a firebomb than you do from grabbing a normal bomb. And you get a big bonus at the end of a level for grabbing the firebomb also. So it's really, really tempts you to, you know, you can grab any bomb at any time if you just want to get through the level. But if you really want to get a high score, you got to go for the firebomb. And that can make you do some, you know, very risky things. It can make you wait for enemies to appear that otherwise wouldn't be there. Shit. And it can make you, like, hold off and waste precious time um, waiting for the firebomb to that you're going for to be in like a space where you can actually grab it yeah and this so this game is all about like forcing you to make risky decisions and to push the game push yourself to the limits of unplayability if you want to get a high score it's not a it's it's kind of uncomfortable like it's a it's a cute game it's a very cute game to play uh, to look at but to play it it's kind of anxiety inducing. You always feel like there's there's always a ticking clock. You're always under threat. You feel like you're never really safe. You're always trying to make having to make difficult decisions about when to go for a firebomb. So yeah, it's a game that might feel weird at first, might feel like a little bit um, like it hasn't aged well, but I think it actually has aged very well cuz you know, you know, there are plenty of games that feel like Donkey Kong or feel like Super Mario Brothers or whatever, but there aren't any games that feel like Bomb Jack. So this game did have some sequels. This game had sequels and homages, right? So this game was followed by Mighty Bomb Jack, which was an NES game, and Tecmo kind of did the Nintendo thing. The thing that Nintendo did with Mario, Super Mario Brothers, you know, they took this character that was in a single-screen arcade game and you know did put it into a scrolling platformer level based platformer um and that game's fucking great too maybe i'll do a let's play on that game it's good in a different way though you know it feels like a very different game from this one i think that game probably is more well known that game's sort of become a cult classic maybe it's most well known for having uh anaanthropy sort of a, a pretty well-known indie game developer make a game that was an homage to Mighty Bomb Jack called Mighty Jelloff. Although that game was also very different. It had the same control scheme, but it's more of like a massacre platformer. That game's cool. Hey, maybe I'll just fucking play that game in a second. Why not? Um, I'm not doing anything else. But yeah, 
Um, I'm just going to play the game now. Let me actually try to get a high score. Well, well, that failed as soon as it started, but maybe I can still pull it together here. Yeah, one of the other things about this game is it has this sort of, you know, it, the, it has these like vaguely photorealistic backgrounds. It's a game that looks pretty good for 1984, I have to say, and these backgrounds are pretty naturalistic depictions of like world landmarks. Like you have that castle in, castle in Germany. I think it's called like Neuschwanstein. I don't my I don't know how to pronounce German. But, you know, you're kind of like going around the world, and I guess the idea is that these landmarks are being bombed, and you're trying to defuse the bombs. You're like a superhero. Um, what is this? Tokyo, New York City. I guess there's the Tekon logo back there, so I guess this is Tokyo, or some city in Japan. I don't actually know where Tecmo is located back then. Whoop. Okay. Shit. Well, um, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, and that's kind of a thing that that has I've seen in other Japanese arcade games, like specifically, what is the game Super Pang? The Capcom game has like a similar thing where you're. It's kind of like mechanically an abstract game that takes place in like very naturalistic sort of world landmarks. I wonder if that game. It definitely feels like the visual style of that game started with this game, but I don't know if there's any direct connection there. It's possible. Um, yeah, where am I going with this? Yeah, so this game is level-based, though, unlike Pac-Man. It has, like, very, you know, the level design here is very intentional, and it gets interesting later on in the game, too, and a big part of the challenge is, comes from the level design. So it's different from Pac-Man in that sense, also. And different from Super Mario Brothers, you know, that game did have level design and sort of the enemy placement, but I don't believe, or sorry, I said Super Mario Brothers, I meant to say Mario Brothers, the arcade game. That game did have designed levels, you know, the types of enemies that you, that you uh, saw in each level felt designed, but the actual layout of the levels didn't change. And I think that was still kind of rare back in 1984 to see you know, arcade games that had, like, specifically designed levels like this. So I do appreciate that. And, yeah, we'll get to some more. Hopefully, if I get far enough, we'll get to some of the more interesting levels later on. Um, yeah, I'm just going to play it safe this time and try to show you guys some of the levels. So I'll go for the P rather than going for a high score. I guess I haven't explained all of the mechanics yet, though, so... The, you might also notice me collecting these like B logos that appear. Those Bs give you extra multiplier, which is also really important if you're going for a high score. Um, you know, the multiplier obviously gives you like exponentially more points if you get it. And you know, this is a game that has very high like scoring variability. Maybe there's a better term for that, but I guess what I'm trying to say is that. You know, in this game, you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily always going to get roughly the same number of points from like level one or le from like a given level in the game. You could get, if you have a particularly good run, you could get like, you know, and way more points on level one than you would if you didn't, didn't really go f for a high score. So, you know, it feels exciting in that way. It feels like it's a game that if you die early on you're not necessarily screwed out of a high score you can still kind of pull it back together i did really badly that time let me let me really focus here i've heard that it's hard to talk while you play a game and maybe that's true maybe people didn't lie to me about that uh yeah so here we are in egypt there's the beautiful sphinx there in the background you know, I do like cat people. I've been thinking about cat people a lot lately. The Sphinx is kind of the original cat person, you know. I'm not going to say that the Sphinx is a furry, because, you know, furries have a very specific context in modern culture, and I think calling, like, the ancient Egyptian religion furry-based would be disrespectful and misconstruing it, but I'm just saying there's a connection there. The Sphinx, you could say that the Sphinx was a furry, you know, I think that's cool. I like furries, and I like cat people, specifically. I don't know what it is. They've just been on my mind lately. Uh, you know, when you die in this game, a little bird grabs you? Uh, this is the first time I've noticed that. Was I imagining that? I'll have to keep my eye out for that little bird that grabbed Bomb Jack's butt, it looks like. How am I doing here? I'm not really paying attention again. You know, 
I'm not gonna really try to get a high score expressly. I'm just gonna try to survive. Get all the bombs, get some peas. Uh, get some bees, some peas, some bombs. And, you know, just, just chill out and try not to die. Shit. I'm doing pretty badly here. Uh, well, I can definitely beat this level at the very least. See you later, Germany. What's the next level? Oh yeah, Tokyo. Okay, I'm gonna beat Tokyo this time, I can feel it. The music in this game, you know, I love game music. I gotta say this game, it's a little early on for game music, but it's not something you really notice. It's kind of like pleasant and jaunty, but you don't really think about the melody. Uh, you know, it's not great. Yeah, there's a little bird. The little bird's pecking my butt or something. I'm not sure what that's supposed to represent. I have to think about that. You know, it's it's interesting to think about, like, the symbolism uh, in this game. You know, like, Bomb Jack is like a superhero with horns. Why does he have horns? I mean, horns usually are... Is he human? Is that part of his costume? Maybe it's supposed to be ears, kind of like Batman. But, you know, what's his theme, you know? Like... His name's Bomb Jack, I guess, because he collects bombs, and I get that. So we got to a level there, LA, I want to say. Maybe it's LA, you kind of have that romantic overlook. I, I get the feeling that it's supposed to be in America, but, you know, that's just, just, just my thought. I like the background, though. But yeah, Bomb Jack's costume, you know? Yeah, what what's he into? You know, like, what kind of guy is Bomb Jack? He's not really a well-defined character... But I do like the way he looks. He's cute, but he's also, he has a little bit of edge to him. You know, he's a little bit devilish. And the robots here, I'm also into. I mean, the enemies that you're fighting, I assume they're robots. They all have that sort of gray chrome body and, yeah, I'm doing real bad here, I'm sorry. The gray chrome body and the flashing red eyes, it's a good look. You know, I like the enemy design in this game. You know, I think the fact that the enemies are constantly transforming makes it so that they don't really have the same, like, strong sense of personality that enemies in Mario or Pac-Man do. Because, you know, the enemies don't feel like individuals. They feel like they could be anything. But I kind of like the sense of chaos that that gives you. It makes you feel like you can never really expect what's going to happen, and it makes you feel like you're not necessarily facing a group of individuals, but you're facing, like, an army like or like a hive mind or something of these enemies that want to attack you and it's scary you know yeah that's a good you know that's something i like about this game it has a mixture of wholesome jaunt with like anxiety and just fear that i appreciate god this is fucking rough see you know this is a tough game i feel like i need to get better at just dodging because i feel like i could have gotten out of that situation if i was just like a little bit more skillful all right let's go to tokyo see my scores have been real low in this game you know i i did much better when i was like just explaining the mechanics and not paying attention to what i was doing so maybe i just need to you know oop, stop trying to be so intentional and just fucking t let the the wind carry me where it may you know it's maybe this game is teaching me a lesson about relying on intuition rather than intellect which is a thing that i think action games do you know especially these very qu quickly paced abstract action games from the early 80s you know one of my favorite games robotron feels like that too it feels like to really be good at, at Robotron and maybe Bomb Jack also, you just have to switch off your brain and just, you know, let things happen. Not worry too much about being good or pay, paying attention to any one particular thing, but just kind of like playing the game until you have a pretty good understanding of the mechanics and muscle memory and then just letting your brain just figure the shit out on its own. Is that like the unconscious portion of your brain, or it's not the unconscious, but I'm not sure even if the unconscious is a real, um, real, really scientifically accepted concept in neuroscience anymore, but 
you know, definitely this game encourages you to use a less logical portion of your brain. So yeah, I mean, here I am. I'm kind of getting into a nice groove here. I'm just kind of rambling and doing well in the game. Relatively well. This is what I was talking about. When the level get design starts to get a little bit more interesting later in the game. You know, you have these two very distinct sections and like a lot of bottlenecks in this level. And you really have to think more about navigating through the level and where the enemies are. And cool. Alright, I'm pretty happy with this score that I got right here. Yeah, so one of the other things in this game is that the firebombs always appear in the same order. So, you know, if you've played the game enough, you'll know where in each level the firebombs... Oh, come on! I was so close to the P! Fuck me! I was just gonna say, you know where the firebombs are gonna appear, so... You know, this is a game where memorization is a thing in a small way. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with that score. I feel like I've played this game enough, and you know what? I'm not going to play Mighty Jill off. No, I will play Mighty Jill off. Fuck it. Why not? Let's do it. I'll just open it up real quick so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. There's another, yeah, this, this sequel, Bomb Jack Twin, which is more of a direct sequel to Bomb Jack that came out in the 90s. It's pretty good, actually, um, but I'm not going to show you that right now. I'm going to show you, this is Launchbox by the way, it's a pretty cool front end for games. Um, I'll show you Mighty Jill off. So let's see, this game came out in 2008, so kind of peak indie, peak indie games. And uh, it's pretty cool, you know, maybe, maybe most people know about Mighty Jill off because the character was featured in Super Meat Boy as like an unlockable character. And this game was definitely like an early Massacre game. You could definitely see it being an influence on Super Meat Boy. Sorry, just clicking my tongue at a cat. What's up? This cat hates me. I'm cat sitting right now. This cat hates me. And this cat punishes me a lot. She scratched me earlier in the day. So, you know, maybe this is a good game to play. It's about punishment, but maybe about consensual punishment. It's interesting that Bomb Jack inspired this game, but you can kind of see the connection. There's uh, something about Bomb Jack as a character. He doesn't seem like a... He seems like somebody who has eccentricities, I'll say. You know, he doesn't seem like your average superhero. You can kind of understand how he inspired this game. You know, this is an interesting case to look at because this game was... Uh, Obviously, the movement is inspired by Bomb Jack, but... And the visuals are feel inspired by Mighty Bomb Jack, but they, the structure of the game is very different. It's like a Massacre game. So, it's not so much about avoiding enemies or about split-second decision-making. It's about, you know, that sort of repetitive muscle memory building, uh, you know, precise platforming, which wasn't really a thing that uh, existed in 1984. I think it's kind of like a modern concept. Uh, this is a good game though, I mean, it's great, and I'm glad that Bomb Jack has a legacy, because it's a great game. That was real shitty of me. Mm. I re definitely recommend this game to, you know, you Bomb Jack fans out there. I God, I hope there are Bomb Jack fans out there, because... You know, it's a great game. Mighty Bomb Jack, the whole series. They need to bring Bomb Jack back, maybe with some boob physics. You know, if that's what it takes to get Tep Tecmo to make a sequel in uh, 2019 to Bomb Jack. If Bomb Jack has to be a woman with giant boobs, then I'll take it. I mean, God, I'll take what I can get when it comes to Bomb Jack. God, so... I guess that's where I'll end it. I mean, I've talked about Bomb Jack, I've talked about Cat Girls. What else is there to mention, really? Um, so yeah, that's. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the flip side. <laughs>